Have you ever said yourself, oh my gosh, my baby's just using me like a pacifier or heard somebody else say that? Or have you ever been afraid to use a pacifier because you've heard that sometimes it can interrupt your breastfeeding or chest feeding relationship with your baby? Or you've heard the opposite, that using a pacifier can prevent SIDS. And so now you're really confused about whether or not you should use a pacifier. And it's left you feeling like you really don't know what to do about it. Or maybe you're a provider and you get asked about pacifiers and it's really hard for you to give advice to your clients about it. Let's tackle this topic today. And by the end, you'll feel really good about making this decision for your family or helping your clients make this decision for their families. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having only known a handful of people who had ever done it and only seeing it up close a couple of times, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a childbirth educator, and an internationally board certified lactation consultant, or an IBCLC. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to the Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding struggles and triumphs through the lens of systemic and cultural barriers so that you know your baby feeding struggles were not your fault and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. There is no way that there can be given a blanket statement about pacifiers and every family could follow that advice. That would just be silly. Because every family is in a different and unique situation. Every baby is different. Every parent is different. And so we cannot give blanket advice. I'm just going to start with that. And then, of course, research changes. And so as research changes, we give new and different advice. You've heard me bring up the book, Breastfeeding Answers, A Guide for Helping Families by Nancy Moorbacher. It's one of my primary resources when I'm digging into research-based information. And when I wanted to dig into this topic a little bit more because I've been getting questions from clients about pacifiers, I noticed that she even made a note that in the previous edition to this book, she had different information than she does in her latest edition. So that's really interesting that the research has Uh, directed her to even change what she has written in her book. So here's what we know. That statement that we hear of, oh, my baby's just using me as a pacifier is really a reverse statement because the human mammary glands have existed long before We gave babies something else to calm them and pacify them. And so really the human breast, the human mammary glands were the first pacifiers. That is what babies have evolved to suck and be calmed by. It is very normal for babies to suck both for nutrition and for comfort. And so pacifiers are actually a fake breast. It is not the other way around. It is not that pacifiers are what calm babies and then they're using the breast as a pacifier. It is that our lives do not always allow for us to offer our bodies to our babies every time they are upset and crying and need to suck because they have this sucking reflex in order to help them calm down. And so we have in our infinite creativity and ability to problem solve invented a tool to fill this sucking need in babies. But let's be clear that it is the pacifier that is the artificial tool 
not the breast. <laughs> so when a baby is sucking on our breasts for comfort, that is normal. And if we are not able, we can also recognize that in our modern lives, we are not always able to provide comfort to our babies by providing our breasts to them for comfort. So both of those things are true. Now, much of the research indicates that for many babies, we do want to wait until the milk supply has been established before introducing a pacifier. There are some exceptions to this. But the reason is because baby's desire to suck is part of what brings in the milk supply. So if the baby is acting fussy and wants to suck, and then we provide them an alternative, and we are not providing them the mammary glands to suck on, and we are trying to establish a milk supply, then we are not giving that hormonal signal to our bodies to create milk and our milk supply will not be established fully. And so we want to remember that if baby is fussy, even if they're just doing little snacky eating throughout the day, every time they are at the breast, even if it's not a lot of milk that they are transferring, the stimulation of the nipple is in itself creating that hormonal response to create milk and that builds up your milk supply. It's going to be different for every person, but the number we often see is about six weeks. Now, it's why it's really important to work with a lactation professional because I hesitate to give standard numbers. This number, this time frame might be different for you, but we usually say around six weeks, it's ideal to wait. Now, there are some exceptions to this, as I mentioned. So we know that preterm babies can often benefit from using a pacifier, especially if they are being fed from a tube. It helps them to transfer to breastfeeding or bottle feeding faster. If they are able to suck on a pacifier, it helps them gain the strength for that sucking and also allows them to calm at the same time. We know that babies who are separated from their parents and are not able to comfort at the breast can be comforted with a pacifier in, uh, earlier than when the milk supply would normally be established. We know that Babies who have a disorganized suck for whatever reason, maybe they don't have a strong suck or their suck reflex has not been established, sometimes providing a nipple for them to suck on can actually help them to train to suck a little bit better. And so that is appropriate. If a baby needs a painful procedure and they cannot do skin to skin to contact or nurse during that procedure, then it is very appropriate for them to have a pacifier for comfort so that sucking reflex can help comfort them during that procedure. So that would be very appropriate for them to have a pacifier before milk supply would be established. And then, of course, there are times when milk supply hasn't been established and you are going to choose to provide a pacifier. And we know that parents, the research shows that parents who are highly motivated to breastfeed, use of pacifier is not typically going to interfere with their human milk feeding outcomes. They're typically more tuned in to their baby's hunger signals. They are going to be feeding that minimum of eight to 12 times within a 24 hour period. Whereas uh, parents who are less educated about human milk feeding, a pacifier might end up replacing feedings 
because the reason why the use of a pacifier may interfere with milk supply is that when a baby shows a hunger signal and they act fussy, if it's before the time that the parent anticipated the baby would be hungry, but they actually are hungry, but the parent instead gives them a pacifier, then that baby might be calmed by the pacifier and by sucking and they miss that feeding. And so then the feedings might get spread out and over time the milk supply down regulates and then that's when we start to see weight gain issues and then eventually there might be supplementation needed and then over time it might actually even lead to exclusive formula feeding and the parents might not be recognizing that that all started with not recognizing the hunger signals and just seeing it as a fussiness. So if we just assume that fussiness can always lead to suckling, then that is going to establish a really good milk supply in the beginning. But parents who are really tuned in, as as long as you are getting those 8 to 12 feedings throughout the day, let's say you're in the car and baby is really fussy and you're not going to be able to give them a bottle or your body, then that could be an appropriate time to offer a pacifier. Now, some things to look out for are sometimes offering a pacifier because the shape and the texture and the moldability of the nipple are quite different on a pacifier sometimes you will start to see that you feel pain after a baby has started to use the pacifier. And so you might need to look out for that and limit the pacifier use as a result. Some babies can go back and forth with no problem. Also, we have seen that in babies who use pacifiers, there is a higher incidence of thrush yeast infection of the nipple and in the baby's mouth. And so if you start to see redness, feel pain, see white spots in the baby's mouth, then you will need to get treated for thrush. And both mom and baby should typically get treated for thrush. I do have an episode about thrush that I will link in the show notes so that if you feel like you are experiencing that, you can hear more fully about how to treat that. So we do see higher incidence of thrush in babies who have pacifiers. And then as it relates to SIDS, so the AAP issued a statement in about 2006 saying that, and that's the American Academy of Pediatrics, and basically it said that all babies should use pacifiers to sleep because pacifier use was associated with a reduction in SIDS. But since then, this has been studied more fully. And actually, we're not sure what part of pacifier use was associated with SIDS. And now it is thought that perhaps the suckling was more what reduced SIDS. And so some countries have stated that bottle feeding infants should have pacifiers at night, but infants that breastfeed throughout the night, it is not necessary for them to have pacifiers. And I believe that even the AAP may have adapted their statement, but I am not 100% certain on that. So there is some controversy about the idea that it is strictly pacifiers that was reducing SIDS because there is some uncertainty about that mechanism that was impacting that. And then finally, I get asked questions a lot about what are the best uh, pacifiers to use if somebody is breastfeeding. And there's not a lot of research out there to indicate which pacifiers would be best to use, but I will link. There is a website called milkology.org, and I did find some great descriptions of what might be 
good to use and what you could consider. And the shapes that were mentioned were ones that have cylindrical shapes. So not the flat ones that are conical, but instead the ones that are really cylindrical. And the reason they state this is that it allows for the sides of the tongue to elevate and cup around the nipple more similarly to what is happening when you're breastfeeding. Nothing is going to be the same as breastfeeding, of course, but it is a more similar process than than those other shapes. And then using silicone instead of latex is helpful because often latex allergies get developed and latex allergies are on the rise for babies. And then of course, you always want to use pacifiers in between feedings instead of as a replacement. You want to use straight pacifiers instead of curved ones. And you want to phase them out towards the end of the baby's first year. We do know that using pacifiers beyond that first year can lead to dental problems and speech problems. And you can't really force a baby to use a pacifier. So if they're not interested, they're just not interested. And you do want to clean it pretty regularly by boiling it or running it through the dishwasher. And then... You should discontinue the use of pacifiers if your baby's duration of feeds or frequency of feeds reduce significantly. So if you notice that your baby is feeding less frequently or that the feed times reduce significantly, once you start introducing the pacifier, then you may decide to not use the pacifier anymore. If you develop sore nipples, you may have to go back to exclusive breastfeeding and reduce your pacifier use. If they start to have weight gain issues after you introduce the pacifier or you start to have low milk supply issues, or if your baby starts refusing to breastfeed or if you notice these signs of thrush, then you may need to reduce your pacifier use. So I would love to know about your experiences with using a pacifier, you can tell me all about them by joining my Milk Making Minutes community group on Facebook. That is where we discuss all things related to human milk making and the barriers that exist both culturally and in the medical system that make feeding our babies so difficult. So join that group there on Facebook and tell me all about your experiences. If you know someone who has questions about pacifier use, please share this episode with them so that they can get the information they're looking for. Thanks.